Hi, this is Dave Edstrom, and I'm the President and Chairman of the Board of the MT Connect Institute. And today I'm here to talk to you about MT Connect from an end user view. And MT Connect is a protocol that allows different devices with a common connection in the manufacturing arena. And I will get into a discussion of that. But first, let's talk about what today's agenda is and what M uh, end users really care about. So I'm going to talk about the big picture. I'm going to talk about the integration nightmare that exists today. I'm going to talk about MT Connect with just enough technical details so you get a feel for how it works. I'm going to talk about what MT Connect really does, and that gets data, data, data everywhere, and how it really is a rising tide that's lifting all end users. So let's take a look at the big picture. And the big picture is really about productivity. And that's really sort of the bottom line of MT Connect is to, is to improve productivity. End users, to really a great degree, could care less about the underlying technology. Um, for example, if you're looking at buying a car today and what you care about is just reducing your cost because you're putting on, let's say, 30,000 miles per year, um, do you really care about all the low-level technical differences between, let's say, a Nissan Leaf and a Chevy Bolt? Uh, not unless you're really a gearhead. Um, I mean, what you care what you care about is um, the overall cost and the flexibility that you have um, with that vehicle. So, what MT Connect does from a big picture standpoint is it makes it easy to get data from manufacturing equipment to get them on a network. Uh, easy to get information, and then makes it easy to share that information inside your own plant, your own shop, with your suppliers. It makes it easy to monitor what your equipment is doing, and that in turn makes it very easily to analyze. So from a very high level, what MT Connect does is connect once, improve, improve productivity everywhere. So let's talk about what MT Connect is and what MT Connect is not. First, what it's not, it's not a piece of hardware like a PC or Mac. Um, it's not an application, so it's not like Microsoft Office or it's not like Angry Birds. It's not Gmail. Um, it's not Excel. Um, it's not um, any type application. What MT Connect is most like is like Bluetooth. And Bluetooth being a protocol that simply allows different type devices to easily speak to each other in a common language. Well, what exactly is a protocol? Well, the way to think about a protocol is that it is a, a set of letters um, and then a dictionary. So you have these letters and a dictionary, and it's the dictionary that really gives meaning uh, to uh, information, as, as we all know. So the internet today really runs on two things. And again, at, at a high level, it's called HTTP and XML. This is the only technical part of this presentation, really. And HTTP uh, stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And it's really sort of a nice way of saying um, this is the high-level language that will allow browsers to talk to sites anyplace else. So for example, HTTP has really simple commands like get and put, you know, and read and things like that. So for example, when you type in HTTP like ESPN.com, what happens is, is that it goes out, it finds the ESPN.com site, um, it uses HTTP to get the information, and then how that inf information gets displayed is something called XML which stands for Extensible Markup Language. And that's really how the information, you know, how you, you take the information that comes from ESPN.com, all the text and pictures, how all that information is, is basically uh, contained. So you get this, you get this um, XML information from ESPN.com and gets to your browser and says, okay, I know that that is a picture. I know that's a sound file. I know that's a video file. I know that's text. So those are the, the two things you need to know about the internet and what you really need to know about uh, MT Connect from a technical standpoint. Um, so again, this is as technical as it gets, so don't stop listening now, folks. Keep on listening. So uh, when you want to get to a machine tool with MT Connect, and here's the real beauty of MT Connect, 
is that it to the applications or to your browser, it looks just like NBA.com or the Minneapolis newspaper.com. So for example, um, as you see there in the second bullet, you could type in mymachinetool.myplant.com and what it does, it goes out, talks to the machine tool that's speaking MT Connect and then information comes back in a format uh, that your browser and your application can read. Now why is this important? Well because as everyone knows, I mean when you type in um, a particular address in, in your browser and there's different browsers you know, it just goes to, the, goes to the site, they all talk the same language, and you get the information back. I mean, it just works. And that's why we made the decision with MT Connect back in the fall of 2006 is, listen, the internet runs on HTTP and XML. Let's just use that. We don't need to reinvent anything here. Um, so um, as we go through, just, just think of MT Connect as being Bluetooth for manufacturing. All right, so this is as technical as it gets, folks. We're going to start uh, getting into more of the, the business ROI. So let's, let's move on here. So what's the big manufacturing challenges that are out there today? Well, NIST has clearly stated that data incompatibility costs billions of dollars per year in manufacturing. And, and what does that mean, data incompatibility? Well, what that means is that you have all these different um, machine tools, manufacturing equipment that's out there, and when they all speak different languages, well, how do you integrate them, right? How do you monitor what's going on? Um, and uh, it, when you look at what end users really care about, they care about making money, right? Being productive. Well, today the average machine tool only spends 25% of the time in cycle or actually making parts or cutting chips, if you will. So 25% of the time, well, what's it doing the other 75% of the time? Well, um, there, it's either being integrated or there are broken parts or they um, are trying to figure out what's going on. I mean, just, just a number of things, right? And so 25% uh, is, is just a very low number. Now, the holy grail in manufacturing is art to part, first time correct. Well, what does that mean? Well, art is the CAD computer-aided design, you create something. Part is when the CAD goes to CAM and you actually make something. And of course you want to make it the first time. Well, how often does that happen? There, there's a lot of trial and error. And one of the reasons there's a lot of trial and error is that if you can't get information easily off the machine tool, um, how can you possibly manage what you can't monitor and what you can't, what you can't measure? Now, previous attempts were what I like to call the country club protocol, which means that uh, just like a golf country club is that you got to pay to join, you got to pay each time out, and you got to pay to play my proprietary way, and that does absolutely nothing uh, to take the cost out of the equation. When everyone has their proprietary way, it just adds to cost. So uh, you know, imagine you go to Best Buy and you want to get a printer, and instead of just having the USB that you take home, you plug it into your PC or your Mac. Imagine it has the FUBAR dash 304 protocol and in order to use it on your Mac or PC you need the FUBAR dash 304 device driver and the FUBAR dash 304 hardware connector and imagine instead of having USB that we had a thousand different FUBAR type connections that are out there well that's sort of what we had um, in manufacturing you know all these different type connections and you know very expensive now the thing that just blows my mind is that only 5% of all machine tools are monitored today. How in the world is that possible? I mean, on the computer side where I come from, we monitor 100% of the computers. I mean, if, if, you can't, if you can't monitor, you can't measure, how can you possibly manage it? And only 5%? Well, why is it such a low number? Well, you know, a great deal of it is because it's so hard to speak to these things. You know, also, it, there, there's not a culture of really... Uh, measuring and monitoring and doing things from a scientific standpoint, you know, with a lot of shops, unfortunately. Um, it's more trial by error, and, and that's, not how you, that's not how you drive productivity, and it's certainly not how you compete in the 21st century. So this is graphically basically showing what's going on with um, manufacturing today. And what you see there is all these different machine tools speaking different languages. Um, 
And I should back up a second. This is what it was prior to MT Connect, um, where you had different machine tools speaking different type languages. Now, it, now when they're speaking different type languages, well, then it becomes very difficult in terms of measuring them. And if you can't measure them, if you can't measure what's coming out because you can't speak to them in the same language, then you certainly can't uh, monitor it and you can't manage it. And it's an end user's nightmare. Um, also, the end user's nightmare is not all the vendors would provide all the information. They would have what's sometimes called in the industry, I have a secret. And you can't get all the information because I have to send in my super expensive $325 an hour manufacturing professional services god who is going to spend a few weeks and who's going to very graciously open up information that you should just have access to. Um, so this is really not how to drive productivity. This is the antithesis of what happens in the computer industry. And it's just an absolute nightmare for end users. Um, there, that's not to say that there, there weren't monitoring equipment that's out there, but what they had to do is come up with a different type protocol for every machine tool. So instead of working on the really the value out of their software is they had to worry, well, how do I speak to, you know, XYZ machine tool using this FUBAR 319 protocol? And they had have tens or hundreds or thousands of different device drivers to talk to the different equipment. And, you know, again, it's just an end user's nightmare. So how did MT Connect really change that? Well, you can think of MT Connect as a Rosetta Stone. And what the Rosetta Stone was is it was a stone that had uh, basically two different languages on it, two different alphabets. And what it allowed um, someone to do is to understand what one language meant in another language. So the common language here is MT Connect. So what you see on the first slide, for example, is it's showing the Chinese for that particular machine tool. So you would have um, that machine tool speaking Chinese, let's say that's its native language, and then MT Connect is speaking the open and royalty-free language. And what I mean by that in terms of open and royalty-free is there's no charge to join MT Connect, there's no charge to use it, no charge to deploy it, um, and that's one of the big game changers as well. So if you notice on this slide, there's all the different languages, but when you have MT Connect in there, um, acting as this open, um, royalty-free translator, it takes all of that and it translates it into, hi, I speak MT Connect. What information do you need? The beauty of this is that applications such as monitoring systems, such as ERP systems, um, such as any system that's really modern today speaks what I referred to before as HTTP and XML, and that's what MT Connect's really based on. So this is what MT Connect is about. It's taking all of these different um, manufacturing equipment and it's allowing them to speak in an open way. And when you do that, um, the world really opens up to you. So let, let's take a little bit, uh, let's take a few other looks at this. So um, when you're able to do that with MT Connect, what it really allows is to get any data, anytime, anywhere, on any device. And what this is showing here is having MT Connect going out to the cloud, if you will, or going out to a network. And so when you have all these machine tools that start spitting out all of this information in a common way, well, the first obvious thing is, you know, well, let's monitor it. Let's see what it's doing, right? Well, then after that, it's like, okay, well, we know what it's doing. How can we improve productivity? Um, and so you can think about this in some ways as how Donald Rumsfeld, the former uh, Secretary of Defense, used to talk about problems in the large. Well, we have the known knowns, we have the known unknowns, and then we have the unknown unknowns. Well, what MT Connect is really doing is it's going through and it's helping with the latter two because the known knowns is something that people already knew prior to MT Connect, okay? But what MT Connect's doing is it's putting... Uh, it's bringing to light what are the known unknowns, and then also when you start gathering data, you can now start doing analytics to figure out, well, what are the unknown unknowns? And um, this is where you start looking at real productivity. Also, um, with MT Connect, is you can start integrating it with other systems. So that now, when you are making something, now you can have cradle-to-grave memory on a product. 
uh, give you a real life example. An automobile automobile manufacturer uh, a few uh, a few years ago um, was having a problem with one of their 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 cars, and NHTSA came to them and says, you know, we've noticed that in 25 front end collisions, that this 16 inch area near the uh, A pillar on the frame is breaking. And what we need from you is all the welding data in terms of voltage, amperage, uh, rate of flow for all of this particular type car. Well, this is something that MT Connect um, can be gathering that type information because it can talk to a variety of machines. Um, and so this is where with MT Connect, people have a tendency of just think monitor, monitor, monitor. But that's really just the opening salvo, if you will. It's really integrating the data so you can use it a variety of ways. Um, you know, of course, uh, with, when, with open, um, with MT Connect, one of the areas that, that people are, are looking at um, is OEE. And for those of you in the uh, industry, OEE is something that AMT came up with on a way to define um, the uptime at a very high, at the uptime of machine tools. It gets very detailed, and this was critical when AMT did this because there was a standard way to talk about um, the state of, of a machine tool, and so uh, MT Connect um, is providing the ability to really quantify in that way as well as just make this information available. So what does that really mean to end users? Well, um, the what this means to end users is dollars. And what you can think about is um, there's something in the computer industry called Metcalf's Law. Bob Metcalf invented Ethernet. And Bob Metcalf said that the value of any network is the number of nodes or devices squared. And what is what did he mean by that? Well, when you have a fax, we have one fax machine, you know, there's there's quite honestly, there's not a lot of value to that fax machine. When you have two, well, you know, obviously you can fax back and forth. But when you have 10 million, the value of that network is not just 10 million. It's 10 million squared um, because of all of the different applications and use and how it becomes ubiquitous. Well, the value of MT Connect um, in a manufacturing plant is the number of systems and applications. So it's not just the having a piece of hardware that can speak MT Connect. But since it's easy for applications to speak MT Connect, the value of that manufacturing plant is now squared, and that directly correlates to dollars because we're talking about saving time, we're talking about saving money, because we're talking about increasing productivity. And you, you can't manage what you can't measure, and you can't measure what you don't know. And that is why Lord Kelvin would love MT Connect. As Lord Kelvin or Sir William Thompson said, I often say that when you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in numbers, you know something about it. But when you cannot measure it, when you cannot express it in numbers, your knowledge is of a meager and unsatisfactory kind. It may be the beginning of knowledge, but you have scarcely in your thoughts advanced to the state of science, whatever that may be. So obviously Lord Kelvin was a brilliant man and he would love MT Connect because to measure is to know. And that's what MT Connect really brings to the table. So what do other people say about MT Connect? You know, it's interesting. Go Google MT Connect by itself. You'll get 189 million hits. So we've been doing a lot with MT Connect. You know, we, we have the... Uh, the third rev, which is 1.1 that we had last summer, we're coming. We'll be coming out in 2011 with one point with the 1.2 spec. And John Bird, the former president of AMT, the Association for Manufacturing Technology, said MT Connect will do more for manufacturing in the 21st century than CNC did in the 20th century. Okay, let's think about that. This is a great article that Mark Albert wrote in Modern Machine Shop. MT Connect will do more for manufacturing in the 21st century than CNC did in the 20th century. And as we all know, CNC uh, with manufacturing was unbelievable in terms of a productivity changer. And that MT Connect will do more, uh, that is a tremendously 
powerful statement. Let's look at what some end users are saying. GE Aviation's Roy Peterson. Right away, this data gives us more a more complete picture of how the machines were performing. Bill Blumquist at Remley Engineering. If a machine is idle or a transfer station is falling behind, we'll be able to better find the reason. Remley Engineering, you have to have MT Connect, otherwise you're not selling to them. And why, why does uh, Red Heidkamp feel so strongly about MT Connect? Because quite honestly, it makes his shop more productive. You know, that's, that's the bottom line. And it does it by getting information out in an open, royalty-free way that applications can easily get the information so that people can make decisions to improve the productivity. You know, that's the bottom line of MT Connect is improving productivity. So MT Connect is really, it's turning data into actionable intelligence. Right? I mean, that's the key. Just getting data out, you know, big deal. But when you get it out in a way that other applications and humans can do something with it, that's actionable intelligence. And that's where we see big leaps in, in terms of productivity. And manufacturing is dying for this, folks. I mean, 5% of the systems are being monitored. I mean, are you kidding me? And then 25% in cycle time. The ability to increase productivity in manufacturing, I mean, this is just ripe with opportunity. So here's just a fraction of the companies that are involved with MT Connect today. So lots of big names um, that you see here. Uh, I'm not going to go through and obviously read these. Like I said, this is just a fraction. I would encourage you to go out to mtconnect.org and to look at that site, but uh, it's a combination of manufacturing equipment, it's end users, um, it's integrators, it's customers, um, it's software companies, it's government labs, it's government organizations, it is universities, it is colleges, um, and MT Connect has just a, a tremendous groundswell behind it right now. So let's look at you know software companies. Why do software companies care about MT Connect? You know, for example, um, why would the Oracles or IBMs care about it? Well, because all software companies speak HTTP and XML, folks. And guess what? If the machine tool is putting out uh, MT Connect, which is based on HTTP and XML, they can easily get the information to monitor, store, integrate it, and analyze it, and to tie it into what they're doing. And that's exactly what companies want to be able to do, is they want to uh, take what's on the manufacturing floor from the shop floor right to the data center floor, right to the top floor, right to the supplier's floor, right to the customer's floor. And uh, as you see here, um, there are some very interesting things that are starting to happen uh, with MT Connect. And when you... Um, when you think about that a software company can start to learn the exact performance and uptime characteristics of a machine tool, now you start having some real flexibility as well. And one of the areas that, uh, one of the groups that we're talking to um, is DOE, Department of Energy, about MT Connect and um, the smart grid, right? Because the ability to um, look at costs and to make uh, decisions on where you can maybe move manufacturing if there is a brownout and the costs are extraordinarily high, let's say uh, in the Midwest, and you want to move it to, let's say, the, uh, the Rocky Mountain area, then you need to have the data in an easily, um, easily formatted way, such as MT Connect, so you can do that. So now cloud computing is another interesting area. Um, and so cloud computing... The reason why I discuss cloud computing MT Connect is because, again, from an end user perspective, the economics of cloud computing is just mind boggling. So what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is basically using servers where you're paying by the drink or you're paying by the hour. 
And the reason why that, that companies are really flocking to that is because you have these great, great big data centers like Amazon where they have literally hundreds of thousands, you know, millions of computers, and you can rent them. You know, some of these, these systems are running for two to three cents per hour. Well, if you can rent a system for two to three cents per hour, imagine that you're getting all of these gigabytes of information from these machine tools, um, let's say, you know, over a period of months or a year. And now you want to start going through and you want to start analyzing that. You want to start looking at trends and you want to start, you know, comparing, uh, let's say, one plant in uh, Cincinnati to another plant in Singapore that are doing the same things. Well, do you want to buy a bunch of equipment to store locally at your plant? Or do you just want to basically have the analytics done and you know, pay for it by the drink? Um, more and more companies are going to cloud computing. And this is going to be a huge win with manufacturing and MT Connect. Because you don't have to you know, have that, all that upfront capital for the compute equipment. You pay for it by the drink. The reason why I mention this is, again, MT Connect is pushing out uh, or MT Connect enables lots of data to come off manufacturing equipment and you don't want to just drop it on the floor folks you want to capture that data so you can integrate it and analyze it later. So here's a little bit more detailed slide from our friends at Berkeley and what this is really showing is you know all the different things that you can start doing with with um, with uh, manufacturing equipment right where you know, if you look at it from a high level of data and then control. Well, data, you, know, you want to get status, utilization, maintenance schedules, failure, faults, you know, what's going on with consumables, what's going on with tooling, what's going on with process, energy. And then control, well, how are you scheduling things? What's going on with process? You know, what's going on the cam side, facilities, tooling? When information is in an easy to read format, it makes it exponentially easier to start making all of this just happen. And that's what MT Connect is about. It's the protocol that allows these uh, different types of data and control functions happen. Because when you have this common connection, now everyone can start sharing that information. So why should end users really care about MT Connect? Well, again, it goes back to productivity. And when it's easy to connect manufacturing equipment, when it's easy to get information from manufacturing equipment, then it's easy to share, it's easy to monitor, it's easy to analyze, and, and when you are able to share this information with your vendors, your suppliers, internally, with management, you can get to it any device, anytime, anywhere, um, your productivity is going to go up dramatically. So from an end user perspective, um, MT Connect is about connect once, improve productivity everywhere. So, folks, when you think about MT Connect, it really is a game changer. You know, we like to say, you know, different devices, common connection, but it's all about productivity. So, again, my name is Dave Edstrom. I'm the president and chairman of the board of MT Connect. Hopefully, this gives you a little bit of flavor about MT Connect, and I'd encourage you to go out to mtconnect.org. If you have any questions at all, you can reach out to me. Um, I am on the MT Connect. Dot org website. I want to thank everyone for their time today. And MT Connect is the game changer in the 21st century, as John Bird says. It will do more for manufacturing the 21st century than CNC did in the 20th century. If you're not investigating or using MT Connect, you're costing yourself time and you're costing your company money. Thanks, folks.